What's up guys, it's Aaron Nitmar, and we're back with more Spirit Battle Origins. This time we're tackling some of the secondary Mario series, the Mario Kart and RPG based games. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and without further ado, let's just jump straight into it. Spirit number 81 is the Goo Goo Buggy. This cart first debuted in Mario Kart Double Dash as the signature cart for Baby Mario, resembling a baby stroller. Because the spirit art features both Baby Mario and Baby Luigi, and because Double Dash's whole thing is two characters on a single cart, the spirit battle takes place against both a mini Mario and a mini Luigi. They also use similar but different color schemes just to differentiate them from their adult counterparts, I guess. This fight also features the Chain Chomp in the center of the stage, which is also featured in the spirit art. In Double Dash, every character has a special item only they can use, and the Baby Bros special item is the Chain Chomp, which pulls them through the track erratically. So this is why the Chain Chomp is so prominent in the fight. The increased move speed in the fight refers to the Goo Goo Buggy's high acceleration stat in Double Dash. And finally, neither the stage, figure eight circuit, nor the song, Mushroom Gorge, are direct references to the Goo Goo Buggy or Double Dash, but instead they just fit the atmosphere for a Mario Kart themed fight. Before we move on, I want to give a big shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Mech Arena. Mech Arena is a tactical team-based 5v5 shooter that perfectly fuses skill-based competitive play with casual pick-up-and-play fun. There are so many fun mechs in the game, each with their own unique abilities, weapons, and playstyles, and that's not even considering the awesome skins and paint jobs in the game. You can truly build your dream mech. And then you can take your mech into any of the game's many game modes. 5v5, 2v2, tourneys, even custom matches with friends. There is a ton happening this month. Battle Pass Season 8, brand new weapons coming out, and even a brand new mech, Orion. Mech Arena is totally free to play on both iOS and Android, and if you use my link or scan that cool QR code up there, you can redeem a starter pack and get a free Firelight skin, a Prodigy crate, and a Plasma Cannon 4 to help jumpstart your game. And you can even add me as a friend and join me in the game. Big ups to Mech Arena for sponsoring today's video, and let's dive back into the spirits. Next, we have the Barrel Train Cart. This cart also debuted in Mario Kart Double Dash as the signature cart for Diddy Kong. In that game, it was exclusive to light characters, however, it made a return in Mario Kart 7 as a cart body that could be used by anybody. In the Spirit Battle, the player takes on a Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong pair-up, once again referencing Double Dash's two-character mechanic. The enemies have increased attack power, move speed, and can deal damage by dashing into you, which are all a reference to the barrel train being tied for first for having the highest top speed in the game. In the lightweight class, the cart is tied with the Bullet Blaster, so this is why the Bullet Bill item spawns during this fight, outside of it being a Mario Kart related item. The stage for this fight is Spirit Train, which is meant to match up with the Barrel Train, you know, being a train. And lastly, the song for the fight is Rainbow Road from Double Dash, which is just meant to represent the Barrel Train's game of origin. The next spirit is the Bee Dasher. This is a cart that first appeared in Mario Kart DS as Mario's signature cart, and has since appeared in Mario Kart 7, 8, and Tour. Its name is most likely a reference to the B button being the button used to accelerate in the original Super Mario Kart. For this spirit battle, the player takes on three Marios in the wedding outfit, which was chosen to match with the color scheme of the B Dasher. All fighters move faster, they can't stop quickly, and they deal damage by dashing, which is based off of the B Dasher's good acceleration in its original game. And of course, we have the fight on the figure eight circuit, just as a general Mario Kart track, with Circuit from Mario Kart 7 as the song, coming from a game that also has the B-Dasher in its lineup. Our next spirit is the Standard Kart, number 86. While every Mario Kart game has a Standard Kart, this Standard Kart specifically comes from Mario Kart Wii. The spirit fight is against four green Squirtles. Squirtle's green shell naturally matches up with the Koopa shell color in the spirit's art, and there are four of them because they each represent the shells visible on the spirit. There are three spinning around Koopa, and the fourth being the one on Koopa itself. The shells on the spirit art are also the reason that the Squirtles will favor their side special, which attacks using the shell, and it's also why the item spawn for this fight is the green shell item. The stage is once again the figure eight circuit, though this time it more accurately fits the spirit, with both figure eight circuit and this specific standard cart originating from Mario Kart Wii. This time though, the song being Mario Circuit from Super Mario Kart simply represents Mario Kart as a whole. And you can't have the standard bike without the standard cart, so that's what Spirit 87 is. 
This standard bike is also from Mario Kart Wii, which just so happens to be the game that introduced bikes to the series entirely. In the Spirit Battle, the player takes on four Warios in their purple biker outfit. The Spirit art features Waluigi, so Wario being chosen to fill in for his partner makes sense, and this is emphasized even further by Wario being purple to match Waluigi's default colors. The enemy also favors his side special and has increased movement speed, which means that Wario will regularly pull out his bike and drive hella fast, which makes sense for a spirit based solely on a bike. The stage is Figure 8 Circuit once again, referencing the game that this spirit art originates from. The music is Mario Kart Stadium from Mario Kart 8, just to fit with the Mario Kart theme of the fight. Our next spirit is the Cheap Charger. This is a kart designed after the Cheap Cheap enemy, and it first appeared in Mario Kart Wii. This spirit art has Toad as the driver, making the kart blue and red, though the kart can have many colors depending on who is the driver. The spirit battle is against a Peach. This Peach has increased movement speed to represent the Cheap Charger's good acceleration, and she also prefers grabs and throws. This is because the spirit features Toad, and all of Peach's grabs and throws have Toad appear by her side to help. The fight takes place on the Mario Circuit stage, which funnily enough is based on Mario Kart 8, a game the Cheap Charger doesn't actually appear in. The song for the battle is Mushroom Gorge though, a track from Mario Kart Wii that does feature the Cheap Charger. Next up we have Spirit 89, the Mach 8, which is just the kart by itself. The Mach 8 first debuted in Mario Kart 8 on the Wii U, and it returned in 8 Deluxe, and it's also in Mario Kart Tour. The Spirit art, however, depicts the Mach 8 in its anti-gravity mode, with the tires oriented horizontally rather than vertically. This of course carries over into the Spirit Battle. First off, the fight is against a blue Luigi. The character is chosen because the spirit art features Luigi's logo on the front of the cart, and the blue of course represents the Mach 8's actual color. For the battle conditions, this fight features high gravity, a reference to the anti-gravity mode changing your gravity to drive on walls or ceilings. All fighters also have a reduced jump ability to further emphasize the anti-gravity reference. The game really wants you to stick to the ground. The dash dealing damage could also reference the boost you get when you collide with another cart in anti-gravity mode. Finally, the items are all also items featured in or similar to the Mario Kart series items, such as shells and lightning. And both the stage and the music represent the spirit's game of origin, with Mario Circuit and the Mario Kart Stadium song both originating from Mario Kart 8. Next we have the Biddy Buggy, which is spirit number 90. This kart also first appeared in Mario Kart 8, designed after the para Biddy Bud enemies from Super Mario 3D Land. This spirit art features baby Rosalina in the cart, and so naturally the spirit fight has a tiny Rosalina and Luma representing her baby form. The movement speed for all fighters is increased to reference the cart's good acceleration, and the enemy falling slowly is meant to represent the Biddy Buggy being a lightweight cart. The enemy is also easily distracted by all of the Mario Kart items that spawn throughout the fight, just to give it that extra Mario Kart flair. The fight takes place on Mario Circuit Battlefield form, and it uses the music Cloudtop Cruise from Mario Kart 8 to fit the theme. The Cloudtop Cruise theme also features some of the music from Gusty Garden Galaxy, which is a galaxy from Super Mario Galaxy where Rosalina first appeared. So it all circles back to Rosalina. And our final Mario Kart Spirit Battle is Spirit number 91, The Bad Wagon. The Bad Wagon made its Mario Kart debut in Mario Kart 8, featuring cool speakers and lights that sync up with the track's music. The spirit art features Pink Gold Peach driving the Bad Wagon, so in the spirit battle, the player takes on a metal peach to represent this. Honestly, that's the only quirk that this fight has. But the stage and music track are both Mario Circuit from Mario Kart 8, based on the Bad Wagon's debut game. Alright, we finally made it through the Mario Kart spirits, so now it's time to move on to the spirits that come from Mario's RPG adventures, starting with Paper Bowser. While this specific spirit art comes from Mario and Luigi Paper Jam, Paper Bowser naturally first debuted in the first Paper Mario game for the Nintendo 64. The spirit battle is meant to fully reference the first fight against Paper Bowser during the prologue of Paper Mario. The battle is a stamina battle, based on Paper Mario having an HP system like most other RPGs. After taking enough damage from Mario, Bowser powers himself up using the Star Rod, making him invincible and increasing his attack and defense. This is translated over into Smash, with occasional invincibility at high damage, increased special move power, and of course, the Star Rod item spawning. 
The fight takes place on Peach's Castle Omega, bearing a small resemblance to the area that the Paper Mario opening fight takes place in. The fact that this stage originated from Smash 64 could also be a callback to Paper Mario also being a Nintendo 64 game. Finally, the music is the Paper Mario medley song, obviously fitting the Paper Mario themed fight. The next spirit is Kami Koopa. Kami Koopa is a high-ranking Magic Koopa of Bowser's army, first debuting in the original Paper Mario. Kami fought alongside Bowser to steal the Star Rod in Paper Mario's opening scene, and she serves as the secondary antagonist during the game. Kami's spirit battle sees her take over a Bayonetta holding a Star Rod, referencing Magic Koopas being witch-like characters that carry staffs. All fighters also turn invisible after a while, referencing her move Invisiblast that can turn herself and others invisible. The stage is Paper Mario, which needs no explanation, and the music is Super Mario Bros. 3's airship theme, which is often used in fights with unique members of the Koopa Troop. Following that, we have Vivian, a ghost-like witch who initially appears in Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door as a member of the Shadow Sirens, a group of three villainous sisters. Eventually, she has a change of heart and joins Mario as a party member. In her spirit battle, Vivian is represented by a clear Mr. Game & Watch, referencing Vivian's ability to hide Mario inside of her shadow, essentially making them invisible. The choice of Game & Watch is because of their similarity in design, being quite basic shapes and solid colors, and the choice of the blue costume is a close enough color to Vivian's purple. This fight takes place on Luigi's Mansion battlefield form, representing the Creepy Steeple, a similar creepy building filled with booze, where Vivian assists Mario for the first time. And the music is of course the Paper Mario medley. Our next spirit is big number 100, everybody's favorite, Mr. L, Luigi's alter ego from Super Paper Mario. In that game, Luigi is brainwashed by Nastasia, turning him into Mr. L and turning him into a servant of the evil Count Bleck, the antagonist of Super Paper Mario. The spirit battle is naturally against a Luigi, though he's in his purple color scheme, which is sort of a double parallel. Since Waluigi, which the purple color scheme is based off of, is an evil counterpart to Luigi, and Mr. L is an evil counterpart to Paper Luigi, it kind of works to make this the costume that he uses. The fight is also covered in fog, which references the World of Nothing, the setting of Chapter 6-1 that features Mr. L as the boss. The enemy favors special moves and gets a quick final smash meter charge, sort of referencing Mr. L's souped-up abilities in his original game. The stage for this fight is Luigi's Mansion Omega. This could be simply a tie-in for a Luigi-based fight, or it could be based on Castle Bleck, the location where Luigi is captured and brainwashed into Mr. L. Finally, the music track is the grand finale, a song from Mario & Luigi Bowser's Inside Story, serving as a connection to yet another Mario role-playing game. And we're not done with Super Paper Mario yet, as spirit number 101 is Dementio. Dementio is the main antagonist of Super Paper Mario, and in his final form he serves as the final boss, which will be important in a second. Dementio is represented by Pink Meta Knight, a character with a mask matching Dementio's mask-like face and color scheme. This Meta Knight is joined by a giant purple Luigi, referencing Super Dementio, the final boss of Super Paper Mario and the combined final form of both Dementio and Mr. L. So now Luigi being in the fight makes more sense. The enemy dealing damage while falling could be seen as similar to Dementio's teleport, allowing him to quickly cover distance without actually teleporting. Finally, the fight takes place on the Paper Mario stage, with Paper Mario Color Splash's battle theme playing, just to fit with the Paper Mario theme. And speaking of Color Splash, our next spirit is Huey. Huey is clearly a sentient paint bucket, also serving as Mario's main partner during his adventure in Paper Mario Color Splash. For the spirit battle, Huey is represented by a team of four Inklings. Naturally, this is because the big focus for Color Splash is attacking using paint, and with Inklings using ink, it's basically the same thing. This is furthered by the Inklings favoring their special moves, all of which result in ink being splattered on the stage. This paint reference is also furthered even more by this fight being on Moray Towers, which gets covered by colored ink at the very beginning of a fight. And finally, this battle too uses the battle theme from Color Splash, though this time it actually fits the fight exactly. Moving right along into more Mario RPGs, our next spirit is Mallow. Mallow is a Nimbus, a race of cloud-like people who have power over the weather and who live in Nimbus Land, a floating kingdom in the clouds in Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars. Mallow joins Mario on his adventure in Mario RPG as his first party member. The spirit battle is against a team of three Robins. They all use the white color scheme in order to match Mallow being a white cloud. 
They also favor their neutral specials and have increased magic attack power, meaning that they primarily will use their thunder-based abilities. This references Mallow's thunder-based attacks, thunderbolt, and shocker and it's further referenced by the lightning item being the only item spawn for the battle. The stage for the spirit battle is Magicamp, a stage with cloud-like aesthetics matching up with Nimbus Land being a kingdom in the clouds. The music track is Time's Running Out, a song from Mario & Luigi Paper Jam referencing Mallow's appearance in another Mario role-playing game. Alright everyone, don't freak out on me in the comments, but I'm about to talk about Gino. A warrior from Star Road, Gino comes down to Earth and possesses a doll in order to give himself physical form, and he joins Mario as a party member in order to defeat Smithy. This spirit battle is rather complex, representing the full party by the end of Mario RPG. The fight begins against Mario, a white Kirby who represents Mallow, and Bowser. Mario starts off the fight with a green shell, referencing the shells that Mario can use as weapons during the game. After one fighter is defeated, Peach will spawn in, and then after another, Sheik. Having only three opponents active during the fight at a time is also a reference, based on Mario RPG's party system only allowing three characters to be active at any given time. Peach has the auto-heal ability, which references her healing spells in Mario RPG. Sheik is chosen to represent Geno because this spirit battle was made before Geno's Mi costume was included in the game. This choice kinda makes sense though, as Sheik is an alternate identity for Zelda, and Geno the doll is technically an alternate identity for the Star Warrior named heart, music note, exclamation point, question mark. Sheik also starts this fight with a super scope, which is based on Gino's blasters and beams that he uses for attacks. Sheik also charges her final smash meter quickly, referencing Gino's star meter, which can charge up and unleash huge attacks. Both the warp star and star rod items can also spawn, which are based on Gino being the warrior sent from the star road. And finally, the stage, Mario Galaxy Battlefield form, and the song, Rainbow Road Medley, both are meant to fit with the theme of Gino being sent down from the stars. Spirit number 105 is Prince Peasley, prince and hero of the Bean Bean Kingdom who first debuted in Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga to help the brothers against Cacletta. In this spirit battle, Peasley is represented by Marth. The green costume is chosen to more closely represent Peasley's appearance, and Marth himself is chosen as he is another hero prince of a kingdom. Because Peasley is a sword user, the battle condition for the fight has the enemy's melee weapons increase in power. The stage for this fight is 3D Land, which is meant to be a loose representation of the Bean Bean Kingdom, which is northeast of the Mushroom Kingdom. Additionally, the song, This Is Minion Turf, comes directly from the remake of Prince Peasley's game, Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga plus Bowser's Minions. It serves as the battle theme during Minion Quest, The Search for Bowser, which is new content exclusive to the remake. Also from Superstar Saga, we have our next spirit, Fawful. Fawful is an antagonist in Superstar Saga serving under Cacletta, and returns as the main antagonist in a later entry, Mario & Luigi Bowser's Inside Story, attempting to invade the Mushroom Kingdom. Fawful is represented by Iggy in the Spirit Battle, as they are both green characters with glasses that ride around on a sort of flying vehicle thing. He's aided by a green rob, which is a reference to Mechawfuls or Mecha Fawfuls, robots with the appearance of Fawful that appear in Superstar Saga and Bowser's Inside Story. This fight is a stamina battle, with both characters having 140 HP, referencing the HP system that the Mario & Luigi series has. Iggy also starts the battle off with a rocket belt, referencing the vacuum helmet, a similar device that allows Fawful to fly in Superstar Saga. Prism Tower is chosen as the stage because it looks similar to the location of the final fight with Dark Fawful in Bowser's Inside Story plus Bowser Jr.'s Journey, the remake of the original. The song for the fight is the grand finale, which is the theme for the final boss fight in Bowser's Inside Story. Our next spirit is Princess Shrew. Princess Shrew is the main antagonist of Mario & Luigi Partners in Time, second in command to the Shrews. She and her sister set out to invade the Mushroom Kingdom, and then a bunch of time travel stuff happens. Because she vaguely resembles Peach if she had a giant mushroom for a head, Peach is the fighter used to represent Princess Shroob's spirit, with the red color chosen to represent Shroob's red dress. This is once again a stamina match, again representing the HP-based combat in the Mario & Luigi series. Peach is also giant with increased attack power, a reference to the elder Princess Shrew, Shrew's older twin sister, and the true antagonist of the game. This battle takes place on Princess Peach's castle, meant to reference Shrew Castle, the version of Peach's castle when taken over by the Shrews. This fight also uses the grand finale as the background music, referencing yet another boss from the Mario & Luigi series. Spirit number 108 is Starla. 
Starlo is a star sprite who aids Mario and Luigi, first debuting in Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story. She serves as a guide while also storing items and gear for the brothers, and even helps out Bowser and Peach. In her spirit battle, Starlo is represented by Pac-Man, because both are round yellow characters. Pac-Man is also aided by Mario and Luigi, both in their yellow costumes to match Starlo, and to represent how the three team up in their games. All enemies start out as giant for the fight, but will shrink down to tiny size after a while, referencing how they get shrunken down and swallowed by Bowser. The stage for the fight is Brinstar Battlefield, which could be a clever use of the stage's scenery. The acid in the background of the stage could be a nod to stomach acid, with the party being swallowed by Bowser. The song for the fight is Tough Guy Alert, the theme that plays during boss fights in Bowser's Inside Story. Our next spirit is Brock Monsieur. Brock Monsieur is a Brock, a race of sentient blocks who first appeared in Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story and reappeared in Dream Team. Apparently, he is the leading block collector in the Mushroom Kingdom, and he runs a shop that Bowser can purchase items and gear at. Representing Brock Monsieur and Smash, the player fights against Pac-Man, again because they are both primarily yellow characters. During this fight, Pac-Man has increased defense, shields often, and has a high durability shield. All of this references the tutorial battles in Bowser's Inside Story, where Brock Monsieur is impossible to defeat. Both Pal Blocks and Metal Boxes spawn during the fight, which is perfect for a fight representing a fully sentient block. Finally, the stage is Mario Bros. Battlefield form, a stage with very basic shapes and colors, just like Brock Monsieur's design. Additionally, the song is Tough Guy Alert, the theme for boss fights from Brock Monsieur's debut game. Man, I really like saying Brock Monsieur. Next up, we have Dreambert. This little guy is the prince of all pillows, an ancient race of people who live on Pillow Island. Dreambert first debuted in Mario & Luigi Dream Team and works alongside Mario & Luigi as their guide, specifically showing Mario how to use Luigi's dreams to traverse the dream world. For the spirit battle, Dreambert is represented by a pink Luigi, a reference to Dreamy Luigi, the form Luigi takes on in the dream world. This is because Dreamy Luigi actually rescued Dreambert in the beginning of the game, and because Dreamy Luigi is of course the party's mean to explore the dream world. This fight also features a slumber floor, which is obviously based on dreams and sleep playing a main role in Dream Team, and Magicant being the stage is meant to represent the dream world itself. Finally, the battle song is Try Try Again, which is the battle theme for real world battles in Dream Team. And our final spirit for today is Antasma. Antasma is one of the main antagonists of Mario & Luigi Dream Team, and is an evil Bat King sorcerer guy who feeds off of the nightmares of the Pillow race. In the spirit battle, Antasma takes over a Robin in his blue color scheme, particularly because Robin can perform magic like Antasma can. The floor is once again sleep-inducing, based on the dream mechanics of Dream Team. The only item to spawn during this fight is food, and Robin is distracted by the food and will become more powerful after eating. This is a reference to one of the boss battles against Antasma, in which he will spawn Antas munchies and eat them in order to boost his attack power. This battle takes place on Peach's Castle Battlefield form, representing Neo Bowser Castle, where several fights against Antasma take place. And the track for this battle is the Grand Finale, again using a Mario & Luigi boss battle theme to represent a boss from another Mario & Luigi game. And that is where we're going to call it for now. In this video, we managed to cover the Mario Kart and Mario role-playing spirits, as they are all conveniently grouped together. But we're still not done with the main Mario spirits yet, we're just nearly there. We still have to cover what you might call the Mario scraps, with a little of this and a little of that from various Mario series and games left over. But we're going to tackle those next time, so for now, I want to thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to let me know down in the comments section, and until next time, please remember to be good to one another, and have a good day.